Hello, it's Leanne Peters here. I'm from templeofbalance.com.au, Temple of Balance on Facebook and Temple of Balance on YouTube. You'll also find my ceramics things on, at leannepeters.com. So I'm here for Wednesday check-in. So first of all, before we start, take a moment to stop take a big breath and just do a check-in. So remember from recent videos that I've shared and you can look back at Wednesday check-in videos, checking in is about observing. So we want to just stop, take a moment, take a big breath and just scan from top to bottom, see how our body's doing. Just notice what, um, cat hair, <laughs> notice what is loud, what's getting our attention, what feels tense, what feels achy, what feels sore, what feels tingly, what doesn't feel right. We're just observing, we don't need to um, have a reason for it, we just want to be the observer. And then observe, it doesn't have to be in this order, but observe how you feel. So what sort of feeling do you feel right now, not an hour ago, not in an hour's time, but how do you feel now? And also, what's your state of mind now? Not how it was, not how it might be, but now. And then from the information we gather and gain from checking in, then we can take some steps to bring our balance. So if, if we feel dehydrated, we might take a step then to, okay, let's go and get a drink. If we feel stiff in our body, okay, let's make five minutes if we can now, or while we're doing things to stretch and move our body. If we're feeling emotionally raw and sensitive, then we may need to promptly make some time, maybe today or at some stage where we can sit with our journal, sit with the rawness and the honesty of how we feel and work our way through it. If we're dealing with or notice that we're very stressed out mentally, then we may need to look at what's going on in our life and where can we reduce our stress levels. So that's in general. Now in there's also times that we go through really intense things or really tragic events um, and all this stuff will go out the window because all we can do then is just get through our day and work our way through, muddle our way through whatever's going on for us. So when I say these check-ins, even though it's good to do when we're going through sort of very difficult, challenging times, but when we're in um, just a general state, it's good to check in. When we're in an emergency, tragic, challenging, you know, stuff going on state, then that's when we need to probably just do our best to get through our day, take one step at a time. So I had a question that came in that's kind of related to what I would like to talk about today, about checking in. Um, the question is, and I don't know who the question was from because Corey sent it to me and he didn't give me a name, so I'm not sure who said this or where it was said, <laughs> but the question is, how do I cleanse my home and self from harmful people? Now, this is really important to do with check-in because we may check in or we may become more self-aware because that's what we're doing when we check in, isn't it? We're not only observing, we're... Um, not judging hopefully we're observing how we feel when we check in in the moment um, <laughs> I thought I was going to say again ah, again what was I going to say so let me go back to the question how do I cleanse my home and self from harmful people yeah and so as we check in as we observe we are also becoming more self-aware and when we become more self-aware, as we become more self-aware, we start noticing more little things about ourselves and our life, our relationships, our workplace, that are perhaps negative or harmful or dis disruptive or destructive to us, that are not supportive. So what can we do about it? Some of the negativity or the harmful energy, we could say, based on the question, um, might stick out like a sore thumb and some days we may take it really really personally other days we might barely notice but then as we become more self-aware it might become more of something we're aware of so there's, a, there's not any real rule for this but there's a few things that may help I think firstly before I talk about external things that could potentially help um, it's important I feel to make sure that we are not subjecting ourselves to harm 
to ongoing attack or negativity or abuse that um, as we become stronger in ourselves and as we become more self-aware and self-observant -obs -obs uh, we're probably be going to come be go going to become less tolerant to such ongoing um, behavior or treatment you know we it's not ideal for us to let ourselves be treated like a doormat or be subject to any form of um, harmful or negative attack or abuse in any sort of way. Um, so if possible, it might be important to think about, is this a situation that's safe and supportive for me? And if not, how can I maybe step out and um, make some changes? Is there help? Is there support that I can reach out um, and ask for? So if you're in a really... Um, you know, a really difficult daily situation like this, it might be worth thinking about taking the steps to get out to make changes. So let's assume that we're in just a general space of negativity or in, you know, let's say someone in our house or in our home or in our workplace is just seems to always be in a bad mood at the moment. They might be going, well, they would definitely be going through their own stuff. So how do we cleanse and deal with that? If we know we're about to step into a harmful place or a negative space or a space that has a, a, um, an effect on us, like for me, going to a hospital always seems to, well, used to I should say um, has a negative impact on me so what that does is sometimes I will feel what's going on in there and it will just feel really heavy and uncomfortable and I just got to get out of there sometimes I really feel sick and ill when I walk into a hospital so at the time I noticed this was when a relative was in a coma for a month um, you know 10 or 11 years ago and when I first went in I remember just I actually I nearly fainted and then I had to as I was walking towards the hospital I had to just keep affirming my protection so I called all of my spiritual helpers my loved ones in spirit forward as I was walking towards the hospital and I affirmed my protection so what I do is I I ask them to keep me protected so we one we can ask our spiritual helpers our loved ones in spirit to keep us safe keep us protected and I imagine them being sort of on guard around us protecting us uh, another thing we can do is have a really clear intention or a visualization of our energy field so if we imagine the area of our aura that's just outside of our body we can maybe imagine that as like an arm's length all the way around we can imagine this as a protective bubble so some people like to imagine white light around them if that works for you then great some people like to imagine um, something else <laughs> for me I like to imagine an eggshell because I think of an eggshell as um, unpenetratable from outside influences or negativity so it helps keep my inner space all nice and positive as best as possible um, and it helps keep the outside out <laughs> so it's an intention so it doesn't matter what color light you use what you visualize it's your intention and as long as it feels protective to you I remember working with a young girl who had a lot of negative spiritual um, energy, negative attachments, we could say, that were affecting her really negatively. And so, you know, it's a bit adult, I guess, to talk about um, your spiritual helpers protecting you and visualising yourself in a bubble or an eggshell or what have you. So what really resonated with her, and we worked together on doing this big drawing of a lion, because to her, her protective animal, that the animal that she thought was most protective of her, was a lion. So we worked on this beautiful lion drawing together over a few weeks, and she hangs this on a wall, and I've, I've reminded her just to ask the lion to come and keep her safe. Um, whenever you know and imagine that the lines there next to her protecting her if she feels like she's under attack so that's a really great approach to have especially for a child or someone who's quite vulnerable and um, maybe not um, as mature I guess uh, mentally 
So we can ask our animals, our symbols, our visualizations, our beings that we feel are protective to us. Sensitive people like empaths, it's helpful to wear a protective talisman or again a, a symbol or a color or a crystal that feels protective to us. So we don't need to ask, is this for protection? We should be able to feel or sense, yes, this is my protective stone. I have a pendant that I wear, it's an OM symbol with a little black stone and that's my protective talisman. I barely wear it, but if I'm feeling particularly vulnerable and sensitive and I feel like I'm under attack or I'm being attacked, um, usually I can just rise up above it and just sort of shake it off. But sometimes, you know, it affects just a little bit, stabs just a little bit deeper than usual. So I will put on my protective talisman for a few days. I will wear it day and night until I feel protected again. So that's also part of my protection toolkit. So. We've got um, calling our loved ones in, or our power animals, our um, spiritual teachers. We've got our visualization of a bubble, a, an egg shell, a light around us. Uh, we've got wearing a protective talisman or a symbol of some sort that feels protective to us. Um, we could put a crystal that we feel protective into our pocket. For example, we could, well, on the crystal subject, we can use crystals. Now the cluster crystals that have clusters, a group of little crystals in one, they're great for protecting and, and energizing rooms and spaces. So having a protective a crystal at our desk or beside our bed or on our um, somewhere in our home, that may be helpful too, to sort of radiate positivity out. Um, another thing which we're going to do now is smudging. So smudging with our sage stick, or we could use incense, we could use a feather, we could use a leaf, we could use a crystal, we could use our hand. Again, it doesn't matter the tool that we're using. You don't have to go out and desperately find a sage stick, for example. You can use anything. I'm like, I could use this lighter if I wanted to. To As long as I feel and believe 100% that it is creating a protection or it is cleansing this space, then it's going to work for me. If I don't believe it, I could be using a sage stick and only 60% believe that it's effective, and it's probably not really going to be effective. I could use this and believe 100% it's going to be effective, and it will be. So it doesn't matter what we're using, it's the intention behind it that's really important. So I'm going to light this smudge stick if anything else comes to mind about how to cleanse. So I guess we've talked about protection saging is for cleansing so this will help it can help clear our body of negative energy or harmful energy it can help clear the space the home the room wherever we may be the object so I'll give you some examples I'm going to light this which will just take a moment so take a nice big breath so you can also work with your breath so big cleansing breath to help cleanse your insides. <laughs> you can visualize if you're actually clearing harmful energy. You can visualize yourself under a waterfall and imagine that waterfall carrying away all negativity and harmful energy from your uh, heart, your mind, your body. <sighs> Keeping, you know, like the question is about cleansing but I focused quite a bit around protection because um, protection once we cleanse it's really helpful to hold intentions of protection and we shouldn't need to do it all the time but there will be times and occurrences where we will need to amp it up and you might get to a point where like I am in general where you just know that you're protected you know your space is clear and is safe and protected. And it's only the odd time, probably a couple of times a year, that for me I might have to wear my protective talisman. So let's light this sage stick. So what I am doing, if you want to use sage or incense, so what I would do if I'm cleansing myself, I would most likely stand up, and I would just hold this smoke here near me so I can smell it and feel it and connect with it. Now I'm holding the intention of it clearing my space. So I actually wash this smoke over me. I use my hand and I wash it over my feet, my legs, under my arms, 
between my legs and all around, all around my head space. I can imagine it going around to my back. Some people are fanatical and need to have it over their back. So you can try and get it back there or ask someone to do it if it's something that you feel really passionate about. I don't typically feel that, so it's okay. Oh, my genie sent me some sage. I don't know if you saw my unboxing from uh, some mountain sage from the US. And I put the little uh, bits and pieces here in my smudge bowl on the sand. And there's a little bit in here, a light. And it smells divine. I've got my sage the sticks that you sent me Jeannie to I've got them drying out so in the next few weeks probably actually when this is run out I'll get your uh, sticks out they smell beautiful and I think that's where a lot of us relate to the sage or the incense is that the smell the smell invokes something in us um, and you know, on that note we we may you may want to use essential oil for protection or cleansing too um, so for me, I'm not a massive essential oil person, but I do use lavender um, almost every day. And I do have eucalyptus and tea tree and some peppermint in the house. Mainly, that's it. So lavender, I'll just put on my hands and rub down on my heart to open my heart. Um, so I use that fairly regularly. So to cleanse with, with a sage stick, just uh, the intention again, just running that smoke over the body. If it's in the house or in a room, I go over all the walls and the corners of the house. I also cross the chairs and the things that people sit on and use and just imagine that being cleansed and cleared. I also cross over all the doorways and I say only love and light may enter here. I open the door if I'm clearing things out. So if I'm visualizing that I'm collecting negativity and I'm sending it out, I will open the door and send it out. And then if I'm sort of infusing the protection, I'll have the door closed and I will just sort of affirm and seal the doors with love and light. And only love and light may enter here. Um, so that's sort of how I use the, the smudge sticks. Take a nice big breath and let's do some clearing now nice big breath and imagine this sacred smoke washing over your body and carrying away with it all negative energies and harmful energies or negative energies entities cords hooks attacks and attachments <sighs> working with your breath now to let it go so we need to let our hold go it's very difficult to cleanse things if we're holding on so to let go of something that was said or something that was that happened um, that might be a one-off thing we've got to let our hold go so remember to let go is to cleanse to let go and cleanse while holding on we're not really fully surrendering so if we can't fully surrender if we're still holding on that's a really important information for us so we can use that information we've learned to see what or why we're holding on. What, what's our investment here in this situation? So, I trust that helps. Now let's put out the smudge, uh, sage smudge stick. I do have some of these on my website too at the moment, some bowls that I made and sage sticks. And um, because it's launch week, Every bowl comes with one sage stick and some sand and a bowl. But this week there are two sage sticks coming with purchases because I'm launching my ceramics. So if that's something that you're interested in, if you want to get yourself some sage and enjoy one of my handmade bowls, then please have a look at leannepeters.com. Now... That's not out. It's still got a little bit of smoke. You've got to make sure it's out. I really, honestly, nearly burnt the house down once because I didn't put sage out properly. So I can't emphasise how important it is, even when you think it's out, to make sure it's out. And then keep it in your bowl with sand, just in case it does smoulder away. So I trust this video has been helpful. Please let me know if it has. And let me know your thoughts. How do you cleanse yourself and your home from harmful energy? what works for you. Maybe there's something I forgot to cover or something that's really important that you find valuable. Please let us know because it's probably going to help other people watching today. So if you've enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button. Please show us some love. 
please comment or share if you're inspired to. And if you want to connect more privately, please send us a message through our website. If you want to learn more about me and the work that I do at Temple of Balance, please visit my website at templeofbalance.com.au or if you're interested in my ceramics, it's leannepeters.com. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be back next week for Wednesday Check-In. Uh, let me know if you've got a question that I may be able to ta uh, touch on. Um, during one of my future videos. So thanks for watching and have a great day. See ya.